welcome to the LRNTeach.com podcast, helping you consider Christian education for the poor and marginalized from a theonomic perspective. LearnTeach.com advises you to cease from man and to think God's thoughts after him. Find us at LRNTeach.com on YouTube and in the iTunes store. Contact me at facebook.com forward slash Christian dot education. Greetings. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this third podcast of LRNTeach.com. It's a real pleasure to be able to interview my old school friend and brother in the Lord, Mr. Martin Davidson. You'll hear how God has called Martin and what he's doing through him in the Amazon. Before the interview, I want to underline that Martin makes no claim to be a theonomist, a dominionist or a Christian reconstructionist. Martin is a Christian who prays and reads the Bible and who has followed God's call to obey him. As a result of this, God has led him to apply the faith to his life and to his calling and the result is the growth of the kingdom of God. When I talk about theonomy, it is not a new teaching. It is not hyper-Christianity. It simply gives a name to the way of obedience for redeemed man. Obedience and kingdom-building fruit are the normal and necessary concomitant of the spirits dwelling in new creation man. For those brothers who call themselves theonomists and Christian reconstructionists, let us not be so foolish as to confuse the mere giving of mental assent to a collection of propositions about the Bible with the living reality of covenantal obedience and blessing. Let us all walk humbly and obediently before our God, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds to the glory of God the Father and to the extension of his kingdom. Every blessing to each of you as you listen. Thanks for agreeing to take, to uh, be interviewed. I appreciate that for taking the time and so on. So can you tell us, Martin, a little bit about yourself and your background and, uh, and your call into missions in Brazil? Yeah, um, my name is Martin Davidson. Uh, I'm the as you, you've known me from school days, Nathan, mm. uh, I went on to, to do dentistry at Queen's, and, and from from Queen's, uh, I went on to become a, a general dental practitioner, yep. where I where I worked uh, in Balamina for five years. Yes. And then from, from there, I also had an opportunity of working in the School of Dentistry teaching mm. um, as, a, as a clinical supervisor. Very good. And so... You know, I was brought up in 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 a in a Christian home, or as I would say, maybe a pseudo pseudo Christian home. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, you, you go to Sunday school, you are taught the Word of God, and uh, so I had a, 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 a definitely a, a basis of, of Christianity, um, but I, I had become very hard bitten and cynical. You know, I knew what it said in the Word of God, and I, I had probably got into the practice of looking at everybody else and saying, well. No one lives that. Hmm. You know, I know we should live it, but no one lives it. Yes. And I suppose I hid behind the fact that no, I wasn't seeing anybody was living it, so I wasn't going to live it. Yeah. And then, lo and behold, my mum was supporting missionaries in Brazil. Yes. And they were they were at my mum's house, and I, I stopped in, and I got an invite to go to Brazil. Hmm. And uh, you know, the person says, "Oh, we need dentists in Brazil," and I sort of said, "Well, if you need dentists, you should you should really ask." You know, sort of a a slap back, very disrespectful indeed, and and uh, the person said, well, I'm asking. And uh, six months later, I find myself in, in Brazil, you know, completely out of my depth, going, what am I doing here? Yeah. And, you know, I left them in no uncertain terms that, you know, look, you know, I, I, I don't really have a relationship with God. I believe in God, and, and uh, uh, you know, I think all Christians are really superficial in this, but, but really, God just hijacked my life. And, uh, caught me by the ear, so to speak, and said, Martin, I want you to be responsible for your relationship with me and leave the rest. Leave everybody else to me and just you and me and serve me. And, and uh, 
I suppose from then on, I really mm-hmm. dedicated to, to trying to be obedient to God. And that was the start of the day, the beginning, so to speak. That, that is that is so very interesting, and you know, I I have totally lost touch with you and so on. So that's the first time I'm hearing it. So that's encouraging. But just for those that are listening, uh, to emphasise that Northern Ireland is the Bible Belt of uh, the Uni- United Kingdom, and probably it's the only real Bible Belt outside the actual Bible Belt in the states. Uh, there's the church culture, the churchianity is so so strong, and that's a that's a really good thing, and mm-hmm. it's a, also a really bad thing. It can give you. It can be like a, getting, uh, what what do you what do you call it? A prophylactic or getting a um, vaccination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah it, I mean, really, if if you, if you don't live the word, well, then you become hardened to the word. If you if you don't walk in a relationship with God, then you become hardened to a relationship with God. There's a, in Northern Ireland, everybody knows what it is to be saved, but not everybody wants to be or intends to be. Maybe is mm. what you would say. Well, there's there's so much there's so much religion and uh, so much that's uh, traditional and ingra- ingrained, and uh, it, it's almost that the, that uh, the word of God is is made of no effect through these traditions and. Uh, yeah. These good, maybe some some of them are good and so on, but uh, yeah, so that that's encouraging. So God God brought you as a as a very weak Christian or an unsaved man to uh, to Brazil. Uh, what what happened after that? What happened next then? Well, what, what happened next was you know as I said, I'd, I'd been brought up going to Sunday school, I'd been brought up going to church, so I knew the Word of God and I knew that I was meant to be you know. Uh, part of the church, uh, you know, and I, I'd always been a bit of a church hopper, gone along to one church and judged it and gone along to another church and judged it. And and, and when I returned to Ireland, I really started to just ask God, God, you know, where do you want me going to church? Yes. You know, God, I, I, I don't want to go to sort of a happy, classy church, uh, a very superficial, all emotionalism, mm. but God, I also don't want to go to a church where, where there isn't the sort of the, the presence and, and just the... the the joy and, and, and the relationship, a live and living relationship. And by the time I'd sort of prayed or, or talked to with God, uh, it became very clear to me that I, I didn't really want to go to any church. I had a problem with them all. I said, okay, God. And, and God's wonderful. You know, Nathan, God takes you where you're at. Mm. And uh, you know, I said, okay, God, what, you know, where do you want me to go? I believe you have a specific place. And just, uh, it would be a, a long story short, but just miraculously, God led me to go to uh, an Elam church yes. in Northern Ireland, which really adopted me and put me under the, their wing. And um, the missionary I was like in Brazil with said, Martin, you know, you know that God has a calling on your life. You don't know exactly what it is, but just get involved with church, mm. you know, and, and, and uh, be involved in everything. So, yeah. you know, for a year, I was just assistant um, to being a Sunday school teacher because you didn't be a Sunday school teacher straight away. Mm-hmm. And then the next year, I got into the Sunday school as a Sunday school teacher. And uh, I got involved in every aspect of church life, you know, from just home visits and evangelism to washing the toilets and, and painting the church. Just the only thing that I didn't get involved with was really uh, praise, and, praise and, and worship on the on the on the praise team because, you know, that would maybe be unfair. You know, God likes to hear me singing praises, but maybe the rest of the people wouldn't really <laughs> lead them into any presence of God, you know? Well, so uh, yeah. I spent maybe, go ahead, I spent no. probably like four years um, doing that. Okay, so you, you weren't working as a, as you were working as a dentist at, at this time, or you weren't working as a dentist, or uh, yeah. what, what? No, I, I, was, I was working at, I was working as a dentist, uh, nine to five as a dentist. Okay. And then just very, in, just very involved in the church with a little bit of lay preaching and everything, and just doing, doing whatever I could to serve. So, and from mm. that, um, I really felt a desire to set up dental clinics in Brazil. Okay. okay. Uh, um, you know, I, I would have to say, Nathan, that was probably my idea. You know, let's set up some dental clinics. Let's see what we can do to help. Mm. And uh, when I went to do that, uh, you know, the doors, the doors basically closed. All the materials that we sent to to uh, Brazil and uh, just get held up at customs. 
But yes. I knew that I was meant to be in Brazil, and 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 once again, there's a real encounter with God and a moment where where, where God really, you know, challenged me. You know, if you want to be my disciple, you need to pick up your cross. Mm. And uh, for me, I thought that Jesus had picked up my cross, and Jesus had carried my cross, and then died on my cross in that sense. And and it was a real revelation at that stage that hold on, no, you know, God has a purpose and plan, and uh, love is sacrifice. You know, love is, is you know, where, where Jesus loved the world and sacrificed and gave up his son. You know, he, he has shown us, you know, God has, has a desire that we, we give up, we surrender, and, and, and uh, give our lives over to, to, to him. And, and God really gave me that challenge of staying in Northern Ireland and being blessed. Or coming to Brazil, mm. it was going to be difficult, and, and, and without any uncertain terms, God said, you know, it would be difficult. And uh, but that was what God had planned for my life, if you want to say that the perfect will of God. So, and uh, yeah. I suppose eleven years later, I'm still here. Uh, that, that's that's great, and just to emphasize that you that you got involved with the local church, you know, and it was the spirit that led you to do that, and that con convinced you to do yeah. that, and uh that you you didn't uh yeah you, you got involved and you didn't uh skip your normal nine to five you really worked at that and that's important to emphasize too i think that uh you know god doesn't call us out of our uh normal work but he calls us when we're in our normal work and that's the tr that's so true as you go through the bible different um from people plowing with their oxen to people fishing and yeah. people tax collecting you know he, he, work and and work and don't don't wait with your thumb sucking your thumb you know doing nothing but uh so god yeah. god uh god called you it's a little bit like uh, i suppose peter that t you know he was it was prophesied that he would he would suffer uh he would be sifted like wheat and so on so god god said to you and uh and made it clear that this would be a very hard life so here you are and uh, deciding to 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 uh to start work in brazil uh or, or you were led mm -hmm. to brazil and so on okay t take us through the first uh the first year or two uh getting settled in there in your work um i think mason you know that there's a certain thing called the arrogance of youth mm. and uh i i really felt that you know I was on fire for God. I was in love with God. It was really everything was really new. God, in a, in a wonderful way, was just pampering me and taking care of me. But there was this element, you know, the the the, the arrogance of I felt as if I'd, I'd pulled my my wife front over my trousers and Marty Davidson was Superman, and mm. it was Marty Davidson and and God was going to save the world. Mm. And so when I arrived in Brazil. I, I arrived with a, a suitcase of 20 kilos weight, uh, and that was it. And I didn't speak the language fluently, so I spent seven months um, basically doing, being, you know, as I would, as I felt then, being very unfruitful. You know, I wasn't witnessing to anybody. I, I wasn't talking about Jesus to anybody because I couldn't communicate. And really all I was doing was, reading the newspaper, reading magazines, had the, 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 the English, Portuguese, Portuguese English dictionary open. Goodness. You know, I was studying all the time, and it was just, you know, and the church that I was part of uh, worked with cell groups, and uh, my cell group leader was a 15-year-old. Uh, right. So there I was, and a cell group was a 15-year-old. You know, so God really went to work uh, I mean, on, on my character. And uh, just in, in the first seven months. And uh, then after that, I, well, I actually returned with, with my wife, Rebecca, who's Brazilian, to Ireland mm. for four months. We knew that we were called to Brazil, but Brazil is a massive place. Yes. And, uh, you know, we, we, I went back to work as a dentist for four months, and we just started to see God, God, okay, work. You know, mm. I've learned the language, but work. Mm. Um, you know, I've given up everything, but but you know, how is this going to to work out and everything? And, and in our natural mind, um, it, it just nothing made any sense. And I think that was a very stressful one time. Time in the sense that if you depend on God and you trust in God with all of your heart, well then that, that's good. Mm -hmm. But as you learn to do that, um, you nearly get worn out in the process. So. Uh, um, 
you know, then after about four months, we got a telephone call. Okay. Got an invite to, to come to my west in the middle of the Amazon. Mm. Uh, there was a, a crash with 200 children, uh, a dental unit, but no dentist. And uh, at the same time, my brother-in-law had just um, taken over um, pastoring a church. And I'd asked, you know, if we would, myself and Rebecca, would come along and, and help and assist. Okay. And so, you know, it's two completely different things in the same place, in the same city, in the middle of the Amazon. And uh, we know that, you know, God doesn't work with coincidence. So, you know, it, it's mm. God incidences. And uh, so we just knew that that, uh, that was the next step to go to my west. Wow. So God opened uh, a door. And, uh, you know, I remember a, a friend saying that... Uh, that if you want to, if you want to work for God, then you know there's there's no shortage of opportunities. So, uh, uh, but um, okay. So, the work that you're involved with is very broad. Uh, there's so many aspects t to it. Yeah. Can you give us a, a breakdown of of what you're involved in now? Because it's it's kind of breathtaking. Um. Yes. In a nutshell, you know without losing focus. Our desire is to mm. win souls for Jesus. Mm. Is, is you know, uh, you know, I would say to people, every person doesn't matter, you know, what type of work you're involved with. You know, if you're a teacher, if you're a busman, doesn't you know, if you uh, uh, know Jesus as your savior, well, then you've been given a ministry of reconciliation, and that is to bring man into relationship with God, and and so that is really probably the heart of myself and that the heart of the church is, is to find ways to, to, to bring man back into relationship with God. Mm. And so one of you know, there's, there's two main strategies in the church. One of them would be would be cell groups, you know, small small groups where, where everybody learns and everybody's working. So the church as a whole is a working church, you know, mm -hmm. active actively serving God. And then also um, this another strategy uh, is a, a little school for a mm. hundred children, uh, from four, five, and six year olds, and uh, basically, you know, we would say, look what the what the need is, uh, you know, in the community, and reach the community through the need. And we would say, you know, that's the perceived need. The perceived need in my west was there was nobody educating. Uh, these children, four, five, and six-year-olds. The government okay. hadn't taken responsibility. The federal government or the, the community government. And you know, when you reach the community through their perceived need, you can bring the actual need, in. and we know that the actual need is Jesus. And mm. uh, so we, we started this school ten years ago, and, and uh, just bringing in, you know, everything they, they receive: their uniforms, food. Uh, uh, you know, all the materials and, okay. uh, you know, they're taught to read and write, but they're taught to read and write, you know, through the Word of God. So wow. You know, you teach them one, two, three, but you're talking about, you know, the five loaves and the two fishes or, yeah. you know, so everything is Bible related. Mm. So, you know, that, that gives you, you're laying down, as you said, you know, Northern Ireland is the Bible Belt mm. in, in Europe. Mm. Um, but the Amazon doesn't have that foundation. Mm. So immorality, uh, you know, isn't really seen as a sin. You know, a woman having five children with five different men, yeah. you know, that's normal. Mm. You know, for us, that's completely foreign. But there is no, um, you know, th th there is no Christian foundation, so to speak. <laughs> and so, when, you know, you're, you're putting in a Christian foundation, you're, you're putting in, a, a, you know, the Word of God. You know, what a, a popular thing here would be uh, a shadow, a shadow no way, whole bad, which means uh, if you find if you find something, it's not stolen, you know. Uh -huh. And so you people get like you know a wallet or, or glasses or something has been left behind. Well, then they left it. Well, you didn't take care of it. It's not they're not stealing it. You know, mm. you just didn't take care of it. So <laughs> you understand? So there's a massive uh, comparison uh, uh, in mentality, you know. So the culture has really not been impacted by the gospel, by the uh, by the teachings of God, you know, by the ethics of 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 the the kingdom of God, and you're really trying to 
uh, through the school uh, for a start off you're uh, really trying to uh, be salt and light and, and bring in the, the kingdom culture of uh, for, you know honesty and yeah. uh, and so on and, I mean re yeah I mean really that's what we're, we're called to do you know that you know, many people learn that, that our father you know as, as a prayer of repetition but mm. it was really given as, a, as an example you know mm. would it would it pray that God's will happens here on earth amen you know as it is in heaven amen. Uh, and uh, so that's what we're doing uh, and um, you know, and it's been slow and it's been difficult, but it's also been really, you know, I would say God has given us nuggets of gold along mm. the way. You know, people say, what, did you, what do you do? I say, well, it's a bit like uh, coal mining. And they look at me, uh, but, you know, I said, it's, it's just digging for coal. It's a lot of hard work, but somewhere along the line, there's nuggets of gold, which there's keep gold. you going. Yeah. And, you know, when you get, uh, when you get children who, who, you know, who, who teach their parents to pray, who pray for their, their, their grannies, yeah. uh, you know, it's fantastic. Or when you get children who actually bring their parents along to church because the children have found Jesus mm. and, and uh, have a relationship with Jesus, um, it's fantastic. Wonderful, you know, wonderful. We've had uh, whole families uh, um, completely transformed by, by the power of God. That's well, you know, the, the, the mum and dad would, maybe would have dabbled in drugs and drink and, and ne never had a job, and never taken responsibility, you know, for anything. Uh, and, you know, but they've got five kids, and, mm. and all of a sudden, uh, you know, it, all of a sudden, Jesus has just inverted that, and the parents are working, and, and uh, you know, they come along the church, and they're, they're learning the principles, and they don't have much, but, they you know, they receive maybe a, a hamper of food, but they, you know, instead of saying, oh, brilliant, this is God has given us gifts, we divide mm -hmm. it with their neighbor who has less, you know, and you're just saying, yes, we're seeing the word of God uh, being lived out, which is very rewarding. That's very, that's, that's fantastic and very much encouraging to see how, how the, uh, the, the, the whole culture of families is being changed and God's, you know, letting a little child lead them. It's just wonderful to hear. And yeah. you're not just involved with the school, though. Uh, what else are you involved in? How else do you reach out to the community there? Well, I mean, we'd have different projects. Barnaby, Barnaby's project would be a project of, of delivering hampers, and, you know, we deliver hampers to, to families in need or in, in crisis. And, mm. uh, you know, we, we would be aware that we, we don't want to create um, a, a dependence on us. And, and so, you know, it would be just for that, you know, where families have basically a, a, a crisis situation. Mm. Um, um, what else? Providential. Uh, uh, okay. Dental surgery, mm. and so we're able to do a bit of do, do a bit of dentistry as well, you know. Um, we push, like, we're, we're in the middle uh, of a of okay. a, a new. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yes, uh, you be, we believe you're involved in training young adults as well. Yeah, we we, we have a, a building basically was was given into our care, mm. and a fantastic building, three stories. Okay. And, uh, you know, our, our heart has always impact the community. So we, we've, we've got teachers or, or church members who have given up their time and they're, they're teaching sort of like, I'm not sure what you say in English, taking care of your nails, is it manicure or pedicure? And, manicure, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And pedicure, you know, inf yeah, inf information technology and basically giving people a, a, a skill where they can, where they can actually... Um, provide for their families and um, okay. here it would be you know to put it maybe into pounds and, and dollars it would be like five pounds to get your nails done for a lady to get her nails done right. and uh, you know with teaching a lady you know they, they, they paint their nails very elaborately and teaching them to do that then actually mm. they're able to make a couple of hundred pounds a month that's a, oh. that makes a, a massive difference uh, um, to the to their life the quality of life Okay. But, uh, you know, a lot of people would say, why are you doing it? And I suppose that's a good aspect is we're able to say, you know, we're, we're doing it because we love God, God loves you, and, you know, we want to show that in a very practical way. So it seems actually mm. just, you know, uh, we've, we've got a recent course on doing makeup and stuff, and we've seen some of the girls all come along who were in the course, come along now to church, 
you think, yeah, awesome, brilliant. Yeah. You know, God, God's really moving. And uh, was it the local government that uh, entrusted that building to you, or where did that come from? No, um, it, it wasn't. Um, it, it was a, a guy who, who basically had set up a, a charity, and he was investing, you know, as a, as a political tool, basically. So he was mm. helping the, the, the city to get votes. And uh, he'd, he'd run for mayor three or four times and, and hadn't get in. Right. And, uh, you know, he just he just gave up on the idea. And, and uh, if you leave a building here abandoned, you know, you'll get termites, you'll get bats, you know, uh, just even the, the heat and the humidity right. uh, would very quickly would run us down. So in, we, we don't, as a, as a, a charity, have the money to, to rent the building. Mm. But it was better for him to give us the building to caretake and the building being used and maintained. Okay. And um, so, it was, you know, so that's how we ended up with that building. Okay. And uh, uh, you also are involved in a rescue project, I believe. Yeah, I mean, the, the, for me, the rescue project is, is, is just fantastic, Nathan. Mm. Um, as, I, as I said to you, you know, our, our desire isn't to to build an empire or to build or have lots of buildings or, you know, the more buildings you have, the more overheads you have, or, you know, and the more money doesn't go mm. into maybe where there's greater need. Uh, and that would be our mentality. You know, you can you can have church and, and, and talk about Jesus under a tree, you know, sitting in the dirt and, and, yes. and our, our desire is to win souls. And uh, I, was, I was praying to God because... My vision would, would, would be to, to work further in the interior, you know, and, and uh, uh, further out of the city. There's, this is a small city of 50,000 people, but there's another 20,000 people that live in the, in the area around us in, a, in 180 communities. Okay. And I was just praying to God, saying, God, you know, I, I would love to go. And uh, I wasn't expecting God's reply, you know. It was, it was no, there, there's this area here in my west, and, and you're to take land. And I said, but God, we, we've prayed in this area, mm. you know, we, we, we've, we've walked in the area just declaring your word, we're, you know, we're expecting good things, and, and, and God kept on saying, you're to take land. Mm. Uh, I said, God, I, I, have, I don't understand, we've done this. You know, mm. we've taken the word of God, and we've, we've applied the word of God, and uh, maybe, you know, and sometimes I'm just a bit slow or simple, and, and God says, you're to no, buy land. No, Martin, not at all. <laughs> We're all a bit slow, aren't we? And and uh, I, yeah, I went I went to the the pastor, my brother, and I said, "Look, you know, this is completely, you know, for me out of the blue. God saying we're to buy land in this area, and uh, you know, generally I would say, and uh, you know, I was always taught to say, Nathan, you know, you should say you feel God is saying because at least that opens the door to correction, uh, you know, because you know, a lot of time we can be wrong. We feel God, you know, and and I would always encourage people." You know, if you feel God is saying something, go and do it. You're better mm. doing it and being wrong uh, than not doing anything. You know, it's, mm. it's part of our learning. And uh, so I said to him, I said, look, I really, you know, I really feel you with God. And, you know, I would even go as far to say that God has said, where to buy land? He says, get into the car. Get into the car. He says, <laughs> God's been saying the same thing to me. Come on, we'll, we'll, we'll drive around the area. Uh -huh. And that started three years of just, of just prayer and, and seeking God. Wow. And then, you know, after three years of nothing, all, you know, there was a real immediately, a suddenly, mm. and uh, we were able to buy land, like, uh, um, 80 meters by 100 mm. meters. Okay. Uh, you know, we're talking a big piece of land mm. for for a couple of thousand pounds, wow. which was very cheap even for, for where we are. And uh, within a year and a half, we've, we've built a building which, you know, we're going to do what we know how to do. We're going to do a little school there, but okay. from four to six-year-olds. And then from seven to 14, we're going to, you know, have uh, and bring them in. And, and we would call it, um, we call it like when you, when you help assist, come alongside and assist them in their learning. Like, um, should I suppose it would be uh, maybe in English. And uh, so we're going to do this uh, as well for the seven to... to the 14 year okay. and, and also okay. maybe teach them different things as well and then from the 14 on up we're, we're going to have different things just just this week we've started building an open warehouse 
which is going to be used to, to teach how to solder, which is welding, you say welding, mm. uh, you know, do plumbing, uh, do bricklaying. Wow. There's like a youth training program. Wow. And so, you know, it really is the rescue project is going to transform an area. Uh, and I was talking to a doctor yesterday, mm. uh, and the doctor was saying, Martin, uh, uh, I, was, I was in the new district, which is the area, says, and I just happened Mm-hmm. Upon your building, uh, he says. He says. He says that's incredible. He mm. says that's amazing, uh, and uh, you know just the size of the structure. And he says. He says. Let me tell you, I've been here in my west for 15 years, yes. and that district doesn't have a school. That district doesn't have a health centre. That district doesn't have anything. There's mm. problems with drugs, problems with prostitution. You know, problems with child abuse. Oh, and he says, you know, I remember children when they were two and three. And now they're 17 and 18 and 19, and the, 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 some of them are in jail, some of them have died, and, and it's because there has never been any care in that mm. area. They've been, they've been completely abandoned. Mm. And uh, he was really excited, and, yeah. and it really is just to, to God's glory. You know, we're, we're a small church, uh, and, and uh, but just a really a church that loves God and, and wants to just do the will of God, and... and uh, so, as I said, a year and a half, we didn't have any money, but it doesn't cost to dig holes for foundations. Mm. You know, digging and manual labor of the church going out and digging didn't cost us anything. And then all of a sudden, a bit of money came in. We started to make pizzas and sell it in the city, and we were able to do the foundations. <laughs> and, and bit by bit, we've been able to just, just build this. Mm. And so now we're at the stage uh, in January. Of 2014, we, we want to inaugurate, open the building, and uh, you know, I was just remembering. I said to you, I was remembering last night of, of how I came here, and, and Hedeka was pregnant, and we were we were staying in someone's house in a room two meters by three meters, and Hedeka was saying, you know, this isn't what I dreamed of for my life, you know, living in someone's house and a no chance of, of of ever buying a house and being mm. pregnant, and you know, and I said, yeah. And uh, I couldn't sleep. And, and uh, you know, I, I was just saying, God, you know, you said it'd be tough, but I didn't think it was going to be this tough. And God, wow. you said you'd, be, you'd never leave me, but I just feel I'm in a pickle here, and I can't do anything to take care of my wife, and that's just mm. an awful feeling. I said, God, you need to open the floodgates of heaven and literally rain money if we're ever going to, you know, I don't know how, and, and, and uh, maybe it's coming from Northern Ireland, Nathan. Mm. Um, you know, we're very bad at, at asking for money for ourselves or for anybody, or maybe mm. just my upbringing. I'm very cynical of anybody mm. who asks for money or asks for support. <laughs> mm. And, uh, you know, right from the start, uh, I've always believed, well, if God has called us, well, then God has to support us. <laughs> and, and, and if we're doing God's will, then God needs to provide us. God, it's God who uses people to God, who puts it on people's hearts. So... I know there's a balance, uh, and maybe I'm on the wrong side of the, the balance, but uh, uh, unless God changes me, I can't change myself. Mm. And uh, so we're staying. So, you know, so we're at a stage where we're just needing God to do a few miracles in, in the maintenance of it, but we've seen that happen before. So, mm. we're, you know, it's exciting, but also you really need to keep on handing it over to God. Otherwise, I'm going to have white hair the next time you see me. Uh, well, I, I'm getting the sprinkling of white hairs, I must say. <laughs> uh, Korea hasn't been kind to my hair, I must say. It started falling out soon after I got here. <laughs> oh, dear. But, <laughs> what can you do? Um, okay, uh, so... We'll just cut it, cut it shorter or add a wee bit of colour. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking about it, but uh, I'm doing my best to, to battle it with natural means, but we'll, we'll see how we go. So uh, that that's very exciting and uh, to hear what God has been doing through you and how he's been leading and providing and guiding. And really, you're, you're, through the church there, uh, you're, you're, you're building an active community that really is... Um, operating as the as the, the, the quote unquote government in the area. You're providing schools, you're providing job training, uh, you're providing um, uh, yeah work uh, training for delinquent, let's say delinquent youths. You're providing all the functions that we expect yeah. that the state to provide. But 
historically you know has been provided by by the church but um it's just the spirit mm -hmm. that has moved you and directed you into into these areas and is enabling yeah. you you know and you are not you don't have tens of thousands of pounds coming in every year to or hundreds of thousands of mountains mm -hmm. should i say coming in every year but i expect that you're doing doing a lot with not so much and uh you know mm -hmm. you, you have uh, various responsibilities but i suppose the question arises you know you're a, you're a christian mi missionary right you must be i guess you're you're mm -hmm. in you're in brazil and so on so why don't you just simply preach the gospel and plant churches and forget about the rest of the the stuff the the the, the, the training programs the bloody blah, blah, blah you know why uh, yeah it would definitely be easier, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, I mean, I, I really believe, you know, very strongly, you know, the, the Word of God says, you know, or, or God says, you know, through, through, the, through the Word that the Word to be yours. You know, you show me your faith, you tell me about your faith, and I'll show you my work. You know, mm. uh, you know faith without works is, is dead. Mm. Uh, and, and if you take just the Bible... And you just read read the Bible. Mm. And don't think about church and don't think about what church has been over here, but just read the Bible. You're gonna get this the feeling that you know God uh, uh, has a relationship with you, you're blessed by God to be a blessing. Mm. You know, you, you know, what God has given you isn't to be held on by you, but is to be you know, just as, as Jesus broke the bread and it multiplied, what God gives you, you're 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 the you're the you're the hand out, and God will keep on filling the basket. And, and you know, you know, I was just reading this morning, uh, and, and and Peter, you know, was praying, and they were praying for boldness to preach the word of God. They were praying, and when they were they were asking these things, what happened? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And mm. so many people in the church today, they want the power of God, they want the Holy Spirit, but they want it for themselves to say, look mm. at me, I'm a great Christian. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, um, really the church has lost the essence of, of what the church is, you know, is called to do. You know, Jesus said, you know, uh, um, you know, he came, he says, you know, I have all authority mm. under heaven, you know, in heaven and earth, and so therefore go you know, so God, you know, Jesus was a bit like rugby. He was passing the ball. He was given authority mm. uh, to the disciples, to the apostles, to, to the church, mm. to everybody who has Jesus, to, to, to impact. So, so, you know, I would maybe have this idea of the world's in the state it's in, not because it's God's fault, but because mm. we have been taking care. You know, the call of Adam and Eve was to go forth multiply and cultivate the land, you know, dominate the land, cultivate it. And, mm. and that calling uh, uh, was given back to us. Yes. You know, Jesus said, look, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've got the keys of hell in my hands. Yes. So as I say to my kids, here's the authority. You know, why, why do people talk about being scared of the devil and demons and this? This is what, you know, he, if I give you the key, all of the cake, do I have a piece of cake in my hand? No. Mm. If, if Jesus has all authority and he's given it, to us. Does, it, does the devil have any authority? Mm. You know, oh, you know, we understand the devil has the authority that we give him when we agree with him, when he comes and whispers in our ear and we agree with him. But so, so I, you know, I would be very much, it says, you know, we're to close the naked, we're to visit those in prison, we're to pray for the sick, mm. you know, we're, we're, we're to look, oh, be blessing people. Uh, and um, I suppose, that's what I believe, not uh, as a missionary we're to do, but as people in, in every walk of life. Okay. Um, that's what we're to do. You know, as, as you're on the bus, you know, I would have that sort of thing of, God, what, would you ha what do you have for me to do today? Mm. You know, can I help somebody? Can I, can I speak into their life? Can mm. I, you know, just simple things. And, um, you know, I would say, it says in, in Revelation, you will overcome, I'm talking about Satan, by the, mm. the blood of the Lamb uh, and the word of your testimony. Yeah. And yeah, that's your testimony of, of how you came to know Jesus, but it's also a living testimony of what Jesus is doing in and through your life. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, 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 well, that's what we're doing here. We're trying to do that.
with the, with the best we can and obedience to God. Mm. It, it's it's that at the end of the day that um, we, we we tend to put this priority and say this is what God wants and this priority and this is what God wants, but. God does want us to be obedient at the end of the day, and there's there's so much stuff to do, and uh, that's that's indeed what He's given us uh, the Holy Spirit to, to empower us to do His will on earth, that uh, the world might be yeah. that the world might be um, cultivated, as it were, and uh, in, in the way that He wants it. And yeah. it just occurs to me that uh, you know perhaps a better title than Christian missionary would be spirit spirit filled dentist. <laughs> You're in your <laughs> name is uh, thank you. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're 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 filled to give fillings, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Well, no, 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 I have enjoyed it. <laughs> so, um okay, just just coming to close off here and this has been very very enjoyable and encouraging and so on and uh but um, can you relate to us some of the particular challenges that you, as you work in Amazonia, face that perhaps uh, people in civilized places like Puchon, Korea, don't necessarily come across every day? Yeah. Um, I mean, jeepers, you, you wouldn't know. I mean, uh, just recently we had a young guy from England over. Mm. And I, I said, look. Um, let, let me do an interview with you. Mm. So let me ask you questions and you just reply um, because I've been here for a long time and things have become normal to me, uh, which right. obviously aren't normal. <laughs> right. uh, and, uh, you know, a bit like, you know, mosquitoes biting around your ankles and your, and your elbows, that's normal. But when you yeah. first come out here, that's really, really irritating. <laughs> you know, uh, the, the heat and the humidity the, is, is very sapping. Mm. Uh, leaves you completely worn out. It uh, leaves you sweaty. Where you, you, you know you never seem, you never feel as if you, you, you dry out, so to, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, it, it know, sounds like a, bit, a place are, are I know electricity. called mm -hmm. hmm. electricity. Yes. Go ahead. It, it sounds awfully uh, like a place I used to. I, I place I used to live in uh, Dakar, Senegal. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, and you were was, saying... Was, yep, go ahead. No, and, and, and so, so you've got that, and then you've, you've got the fact of, you know, the last time I spoke to you, Nathan, mm. uh, was, I was in Ireland, and it was mm. on Skype, and it was yeah. brilliant, and here, you know, today we don't have the internet. Yes. Uh, sometimes the phone lines don't work. Mm. Uh, sometimes there's no electricity, you know, <laughs> And, and the electricity goes at six o'clock when it's, it, it's hot in the home. You can't turn mm. on the fan. You know, you can't turn on any air conditioning. And that's just fine. Um, so there's there's all those different things. My west is, is 20 hours by boat mm. from Manaus, which is mm. the capital city. So, you know, I, I'm going to be going home to Northern Ireland in the UK. And uh, the, the, the lady who's looking at the itinerary, said, oh, Martin, um, you know, I, I don't think we'll put you for going down to Galway because it's a long way to go. And I'm going, <laughs> what? I, you know, everywhere's closed. How can you, how, you know, I said, for me, London and Scotland, you can leave London and be in Scotland the same day. Everything's closed. How can yes. you, you know, how can you think like that? But it, it's just uh, uh, here, everything's so... <laughs> It, it, you know, you, you, you have to go both, and, and the next day it takes you a day uh, mm. um, to to guess where we are. Um, so mm. it's isolated, and, and you know, and with that, I suppose you get you get homesickness, and sometimes, or you get hardened a wee bit to to maybe missing home or put out of your mind. You know, mm. uh, uh, at the start, I used to find that quite hard. You mm. know, nobody uh, um, speaking. I mean, when I first arrived in my my west, there was no internet. And, mm. and so, you know, you weren't getting emails. Uh, uh, people would send me uh, letters that would take three months and four months to, to get here. And mm. uh, I suppose over 10 years, things improved drastically. You yes. know, if the internet's good, you can talk to people and see their face on, on Skype. Wow. And, and uh, so many things. So, yeah, it, you know, so th there are lots of challenges. Uh, probably the biggest challenge um, is the fact 
that you know, you're trying to bring a kingdom culture mm. to a people who, who have never who, who that's alien to, mm. and that could be where you think that, you know that that's quick. You know, you know, you, you teach them and they'll learn it. No, it's a real process of of I suppose peeling back layers of the onion un, until the truth really sinks in. Mm. You know, uh, you know, it was a prayer meeting six o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday morning, and as I as I get on my motorbike and go to the church, I go past maybe a queue of, of fifty people, thirty, forty, fifty people who are going to the witch doctor. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, so people put their their, their faith in, in witch doctors and superstitions, and uh, and a lot of the time, you know, when people come along to the church, yes. they will, will, will try it. They'll have gone to the Adventists, the Mormons, and they'll, they'll, they'll go and they'll be baptized in every single denomination. Goodness that me, makes yeah. Sense. yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, I know it's, 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 uh, it reminds so me that of, can uh, be uh, a problem mm. to take it. Go ahead. Uh, it reminds me of um, when I was staying briefly in a in a village in the south of Senegal, and uh, my village host was um, was a Catholic Muslim animist, <laughs> 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 and yeah. you know, in yeah. his house you don't le leave the windows such as they were; they were like shutters um, open at night for fear of the spirits coming in. So. There's this. There seems to be this great yeah. overlay of, of of the fear of spirits that, that pervades everything. It all sounds quite familiar in some ways, but but yeah, they, okay, okay. So there's there's a great problem with um, just yeah. getting to the foundation and mm -hmm. and really striking at the striking at the uh, root uh, of the of the false culture, the the false religions and so on that are leading people astray. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, we don't know much time left, uh, but as, as I say, um, men, some people may be interested to learn more. Uh, you have a uh, what, what's mm -hmm. the best way to get in touch with you? Probably the, the best way is just send an email saying, "Look, you know, could you could you put me on your your monthly mailing list?" I send out a, an e letter every month, mm -hmm. and uh, if people send an email to to Marty Davison. At okay. gmail dot com. Sure. M a r t y and it's Davison with D a v i s o n. Um, you know, and I can I can get in contact and and they can take it from there. You know, okay. uh, at the bottom of the e letter, there's the uh, the headquarters in, in in Great Britain. If people want to send, you know, finance through the the proper routes and okay. and uh, it, it'll get you it's perfectly well. You know? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll post the links to your blog site and um, Irish Amazon and Mar Marty Davison and uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, on the um, on the website and uh, on the bottom of the YouTube link. And um, yeah, so yeah. if you want to give, if the Spirit's leading you to give or to pray or to go, uh, I'm sure Martin would be happy to talk to you and... Uh, uh, get you sorted out, but it's been a real blessing and an encouragement, and uh, uh, to to talk to you, Martin. And I trust that the Lord will bless this interview and really touch hearts and encourage people in their corner of the kingdom work. You know, maybe you're not a kingdom dentist or a spiritual dentist. You know, maybe your work is some other domain, but God wants you to be filled with the Spirit and to really be working for Him and obeying Him in whatever domain. Uh, that you're in. Uh, could I give you the last word? Would you like to to share anything, any word that you have with uh, with the with the folks that might be listening? Yeah, I, w I would encourage people that you know it's never too late. You know, to, to people go well. I've been, you know, I've lived this way, and that sounds very refreshing. And and uh, but no, it, you know, it's it's never too late. This morning I was reading. Uh, about the lame who was sitting at the gate, beautiful, uh, and he was there. You know, he says he was over forty, hmm. and you know, theologians might say that you know he, he maybe had a, a garment which said he could collect alms at that you know at that certain place, and and so being healed, you know, was great. It, it gave him back his his legs and his ability, but it also meant 
that there was going to be a massive change in his life. You know, mm. he wouldn't he wouldn't be able to just beg for money. He was going to have to work. He was going to have to, you know, it was going to be a, a, dram- a dramatic uh, change of lifestyle. Um, but it, you know, without doubt, you know, he he went into the temple, uh, holding on to you know the Peter and John and 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 leaping and praising God. Mm. And uh, but that change, you know, with God, uh, he, he's going to be able to do it. You know, there was that blessed assurance. And so I, I would encourage people, you know, maybe you're hearing this interview and going, well, that's all very good for Marty Davison. But yeah. um, I really believe that, that God God has more than you, 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 you can expect and imagine. Yeah. And uh, we sell ourselves short a lot of times. And, and uh, you know, Jesus said, you know, Peter, follow me. And, and in that, you know, Peter, Peter left his nest and followed Jesus. But in that, you know, where Jesus was saying, follow me, he was affirming Peter and saying, Peter, I see that, you know, there's a Holy Spirit in you that you're capable. And uh, so I would encourage people, you know, you know, you can do it through God for his glory. Uh, and, you know, all things are possible. Indeed. Amen. And, and bless you in your work there, Marty. Thanks very much, Nathan. Thanks again to Marty. Uh, what a blessing to hear from him and. What an encouragement to see the work of the Holy Spirit in his life and in the life of his church. Let's take heed and remember that God has given us the Holy Spirit to empower us to obey his word, all of his word. It is by means of the applied love of God that communities are transformed. What is the love of God? keeping his commandments. However, this work of obedience which builds Christian institutions isn't just for the poor people in the Amazon. Our forefathers by faith built schools, hospitals and other institutions to the glory and honour of God. However, our forefathers in the West departed from the whole word of God and took what was God's Christian schools and hospitals and other institutions and gave them to Caesar so that they could go and sing songs in the corner. We have been the silly syncretists who have worshipped God on Sunday and served the great God of the West, the state, Monday to Friday. Happily, that state is slowly dying. State hospitals and state schools and other institutions are increasingly less able to provide health or education or other services. We must, little by little, take responsibility for these functions. Not in the name of the state, but in the name of our God. Let us, like Joshua, proclaim in faith Let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it edifying. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and YouTube. Remember to think God's thoughts after him by the power of the Holy Spirit. Until next time. Every blessing in the Lord.